today we'll be making this bowl and the center of the bowl the pattern inside is a tapestry pattern and it's done using stringers and ribbons so I'm going to show you how to do that um, I like to add a border when I do tapestries uh, to kind of frame it but you could also not add the border to to make something similar and just make the tapestry uh, style for your whole design or you can have tap um, lines going this way and then other lines going that way it's a very fun design to work with it's very versatile and allows you to introduce a lot of different colors into your project for the main part of the design we're going to be using this glass which is bullseye uh, 110150 and this is a thin clear so this is two millimeters thin and this is not tecta this is thin clear tecta doesn't come in two millimeters so with that we're going to be using stringers and ribbons and these stringers are one millimeter so one millimeter stringers Two millimeter glass gives us our three millimeter thickness and we're only going to take this to a tack fuse so it will remain at three millimeters. So the colors that I'm using in the stringers is the turquoise blue and the black opalescent. And I want to use turquoise blue because I have these French vanilla ribbons and the reactivity between the turquoise and the French vanilla is what we want. And these charcoal gray transparent ribbons as well. As you can see in this other dish that I've made previously, I really love the combination of turquoise blue and French vanilla. It's really a timeless look. Furthermore, if we look closer, we see that the reaction between the turquoise and French vanilla causes the glass to create pinstriping. So that striping, that dark gray striping between the vanilla and the turquoise, it may, is made naturally through the reaction of those two pieces of glass touching each other. So I went ahead and pre-cut my base piece and I cut it a little more than seven inches, about one eighth of an inch bigger in width and height. And then I took my stringers and ribbons. They, they're about like 17 inches long. So I cut them down to be a bit longer than seven inches. And I'm going to lay them on my glass, but here comes the trusty gel. I'm going to apply uh, a layer of gel, not too, too much, um, to my glass so that the stringers stick on it and don't move around while I'm placing them. And then when it dries, then they're really in place so that when I move this to my kiln shelf, I could assemble it on my kiln shelf, of course, um, they don't, they don't move around. And so the design that I chose is a repeating pattern. So I'm starting with the French vanilla and then a turquoise, the black, turquoise, make sure they're nice and close to each other and then um, this charcoal gray and I'm just going to continue assembling till I get to the top it's done now one note you'll see at the beginning when I put the gel down and I slathered it down that was a bad idea because the gel dried up as I was putting the pieces on. So as I was moving up, the gel had already dried. So I would suggest that you gel as you go. So put gel little by little as you're moving 
along. Um, you'll also see that I have this little thing here on the bottom. This is, it's an L-shaped bar with holes in it. And so it, it you're, you're, I use this more in stained glass, especially when I'm making panels that are a very specific geometric shape, like a, a rectangle or a square or whatnot. And I want to make sure that everything aligns, but you could also use it in fused glass. And so it's L-shaped and you abut your piece to it on this side. And these holes here are to, to put push pins through it and into your work surface. And actually I covered my desk in cork just so that I could do that in cork. And then I put um, decorative contact paper. Uh, it also makes the desk, because if you just leave the cork, it makes it a little harder to sweep the desk of, of glass bits. So that's why I added the contact paper. And then when it starts looking grubby, I could just remove it and change it. So by doing this, I put it at the bottom of my piece as I was, and you don't have to do this. I just thought of this at the last minute, at the last minute as I was placing my pieces. This helps to ensure that as I'm putting the pieces up here, that the pieces on the bottom don't just shift off of my piece of glass. And so these are ready to go. This piece is, once it dries, because you see the pieces are still move around a little bit, uh, once it dries and it's ready to go into the kiln, we're going to fire it with the piece of clear glass on the bottom. Because if you fire it the other way around with the stringers and the ribbons on the bottom, your clear glass will end up undulating on the surface and it'll make it so much harder to cut. So we want to keep the clear glass nice and straight and flat. So we're going to leave this to dry and take it to the tack fuse into the kiln. So here's our piece out of the kiln. As you can see, this naughty little stringer kind of rolled off during the firing, but that's okay. So if we flip this piece over, you see it's nice and flat. I will say, because when I previously had done a piece like this, I had only used stringers and the lines really come out nicer if you only use stringers, but I wanted to use these specific colors. So that's why I ended up using ribbons and stringers. And you could see the charcoal gray ones kind of really shrunk down during the tack fuse, but that's okay. We'll just chalk it up to a, a design uh, choice. Um, so now we have, see, if, if we turn this back up and I pass my nails over it, you could hear the texture and you really don't want to be cutting on this. And that's why also we fired it with the, the stringers and ribbons facing up because had we done it this way, well, the clear glass would have taken the shape of the stringers and ribbons and undulated and made it very, very hard to cut. Now we have the side is nice and flat and it's easy to cut. So we're going to cut quarter inch strips out of these. Uh, and we could just do it on the regular cutter. So this is because we had the two millimeter glass and the one millimeter ribbons and stringers. So this is three millimeter This is three millimeter glass. And so it should be pretty easy to cut on our, either with your running, um, either with your regular glass cutter or the mini beetle like I use. So I want to cut these um, perpendicular to the lines going. And I'm thinking maybe a quarter inch is a little too thin. I might go like three eighths of an inch. I've been told when you have a piece that's got multiple lines going through it, not to start on the edge and breaking 
the lines, but start somewhere in the middle and then the middle and then divide it that way. So I'll be using these silver schnitt um, running pliers and I find that these are very very useful when you have thinner pieces that you want to to break. So I'm going to start in the middle and hope that it behaves. I was able to break off all the pieces. Unfortunately, one piece actually did break, break. Um, but you know what we could do? We could make these into earrings or something, put it back into the kiln, full fuse it. They become kind of like our little bees from our bees knees and make some nice ovals and they, they might look like nice, uh, a nice set of earrings and pendant. I will go back and grind some of these pieces because they don't always break very cleanly. Like you'll see this piece has a little, little nub, little nub over here and this one too. So I'll take these to the grinder and grind them. So to get that tapestry look, we're going to want to stagger the pieces so that you'll have one piece of French vanilla next to a piece of charcoal gray. So by staggering them, it gives them this woven look. I'm trimming my pieces down a little bit. So to do that, I'm just uh, measuring and then I'll just score it. And then just use the grossing pliers to snap that piece off. And again, like these leftovers, you could do, you could do a lot of stuff with them. So I'm just trimming these down. I, I, I'm just trimming these down and I've grinded all the edges. Now you see how they all line up nicely. Be careful when you're grinding because these pieces will snap and they are pretty delicate at this stage. So just be careful when you're grinding. So I'm just going to finish. Um, I'm just going to finish trimming these down and I'm going to clean everything. And then I'm going to show you how I've decided to assemble this piece. So the woven area ended up being seven inches by seven inches. And I added a border, a double border around it with the turquoise blue and the French vanilla. So they're half an inch wide, seven inches long and eight inches long. So this is eight by eight and capped with an eight by eight piece of Tecta. I added some, um, some gray, smoky gray pieces in the corners to emulate what's in the center. Um, you'll also notice that the French vanilla here is a lot more yellow than the French vanilla that's on the inside, the ribbons, but that's because once French vanilla fires, the color changes and goes uh, a whiter shade, so it'll match a lot better. Here's our piece out of the kiln. I really love how it came out, and you can see here the pinstriping between the vanilla and uh, the turquoise. And I really like the contrast between the transparent and the opalescent glass, and also the shift between uh, in the background. So I'm very happy with how this came out so far. The next step is to slump, and I'm going to use this mold so we have a nice deep uh, bowl. And we'll put it in. 
and take it to the kiln. So here's our piece out of the kiln now that it's slumped. And I really am loving the shape and the size of this makes a really nice bowl. So I hope you enjoyed this project and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I really look forward to reading all your comments. And if you make any of my projects, please tag me or email me. Let me know and I'd really love to see what you guys came up with. I'll leave you with a few pictures and see you in the next project.